We often describe the dynamics of a discrete time system using its poles and zeros. For this reason, we want to understand what the location of the poles and zeros mean in terms of the system dynamics. We have previously looked at the relationship between pole locations and stability, where we have seen that poles located within the unit circle in the z-plane are stable poles and poles located on or outside the unit circle are unstable poles. In today's video, we further investigate the meaning of the location of the poles in the z-plane by looking at the mapping of a continuous time system's poles in the s-plane to the z-plane. In a previous video, we have seen that the Laplace transform of a sampled signal can be interpreted as the z-transform if we choose z equal to e to the power st, where t is the sampling period. In another video, we have also seen that the impulse invariant transformation of an analog controller to a digital controller amounts to choosing the poles of the digital controller by transforming the poles of the analog controller using this transformation. We have already developed an understanding of the locations of poles in the S-plane, and we therefore look at where the poles in the S-plane are mapped to the Z-plane using this transformation. Let's describe a continuous time pole in terms of its real and imaginary parts, sigma and omega d. The corresponding discrete time pole is then given by the magnitude e to the power sigma t and the angle omega d t. We now vary sigma and omega d and observe how the pole locations change in the s and the z planes. We start with sigma and omega d both zero which is the origin of the S-plane. This corresponds to a pole that is marginally stable and with a natural frequency of zero. It is mapped to one on the Z-plane. If we now move up the imaginary axis, the pole remains marginally stable, but the natural frequency increases. In the Z-plane, the magnitude remains one, but the angle increases, which means that we move along the edge of the unit circle. At a continuous time pole of j pi over t, the angle of the pole on the z-plane is pi, which is mapped to minus 1 on the z-plane. This is also the Nyquist frequency, which is the highest frequency that can be represented by a sampled signal. If we move further up the imaginary axis, the pole will be mapped to a lower frequency region in the z-plane. If we now keep the imaginary part of the pole at j pi over t, but we decrease the real part from 0 to minus infinity, we move along this line in the s-plane. When mapped to the z-plane, we see that the angle stays at pi, but the magnitude decreases from 1 to 0, which means we move along the real axis from minus 1 to 0. For similar ranges of pole locations on the bottom of, of the s-plane, the discrete time poles are mapped similarly on the z-plane. We have seen how the edge of the stable region that can be represented as discrete time poles can be mapped from the s-plane to the z-plane. Let's now look at how poles are mapped within this region. A complex continuous time pole can be written as minus zeta times omega n plus or minus j omega n times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared where zeta is the damping and omega n is the natural frequency. When this description of the pole is mapped to the z-plane, we get this pole description. If we keep the damping fixed and vary the natural frequency, we get radial lines in the s-plane. The blue line corresponds to low damping and the red line corresponds to high damping. In the z-plane, as the natural frequency increases, the magnitude decreases as the angle increases, which means that it is mapped to a spiral on the z-plane. The blue line corresponds to low damping and the red line corresponds to high damping. Poles with a high damping are therefore located close to the real axis between 0 and 1, and poles with lower damping are located closer to the unit circle. If we keep the natural frequency constant but vary the damping, then we get semicircles in the s-plane. The blue line corresponds to low natural frequency and the red line corresponds to high natural frequency. 
In the z-plane, if we decrease the damping from 1 to 0, the angle increases from 0 as the magnitude increases from a small value to 1. The blue line corresponds to a low natural frequency and the red line corresponds to a high natural frequency. Poles with a low natural frequency are therefore located close to z equal to 1 and poles with higher natural frequency are located closer to the real axis between minus 1 and 0. When we look at the mapping for constant damping and constant natural frequency, we see that in the low frequency region, the interpretation of a pole's location is similar to that of the S-plane. However, for the higher frequency region, the interpretation differs significantly.